Welcome to Compute 175. Today, we're going to continue to learn how to use the debugger. In this video, we'll learn how to debug programs that have function calls. If you have not watched the first video on using the debugger, go ahead and watch that now before we continue. This is a program I wrote that asks you for a slope and an intercept. Then it uses this print linear function to print the output of this linear function for 10 values of x. Unfortunately, whenever I run it, it crashes. Let me show you. So I'm going to give it a slope of 2 and an intercept of 1. But I have this weird error that I don't really understand, like type error, percent %d format, a number is required, not string. What I'd like to know is why I got this error, and then I'll figure out how to fix it. To help me understand why I got this error, I'll use the debugger to help me trace my program. Since I don't really understand where my program starts going wrong, I'm going to pause it on the first line of main. To pause it, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here on line 2. And now I'm going to start debugging it. I'll click the bug button to start debugging. Okay, now we're paused on the first line. I'll run this line by pressing step over. Cool. It's asking me for the slope. I'll give it 2 once again. And now it's paused at this next line. I'm going to press step over to run it. So now it's asking me to give it the intercept. I'm going to give it 1 once again. Finally, I'm going to step over this one line that says print linear. And let's see what happens. OK, so it looks like it ran all of print linear. I'm going to step over one more time. OK, so it goes back to main. That's kind of weird. And let's step over again to see where this heads. Oh, drat. It crashed again. Looking at the exception panel, which opened, it seems that the crash happened inside the print linear function. But when I clicked step over, when it was hovering over the function called to print linear, it's like the debugger decided to skip tracing all the code in print linear altogether. What if, instead of skipping function calls, I wanted to continue tracing inside them. That's what the step over button allows us to do. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to restart the debugger. So stop, and then start. Just as before, I'll enter 2 for the slope and 1 for the intercept. So 2, and step over this line, 1. OK, I'm at the function call to print linear. Instead of pressing step over to run the line, I'm going to click step into. What step into does is allow you to trace inside function calls. Before I click step into, I'm going to open the call stack panel. Notice how there are two stack frames on the call stack. These are my function calls. The first one on the stack is my module, which calls main, and the highlighted one is within main, where I'm about to call print linear. Notice what happens when I click the Step Into button. I'm now paused at the first line of print linear. And if we look at the call stack panel, there are now three function calls. The last one is print linear. And if I click on the stack frame above it, we'll see that it's paused at the line that is calling print linear. OK, I'll click on that last stack frame again so that I can step through the print linear function. Let's step through this function inspecting the variables in the stack data panel. So our intercept and slope are 1 and 2, respectively. That seems right. Let's step through this function to find out how those variables are used. So step over. OK, so now we're in this for loop. It looks like we're going to call another function I wrote, linear. Instead of stepping over this line, I'm going to step into the function call to see what it does with the slope, intercept, and x variables. So step into this function. All right, we're in the linear function call now. Once again, if you notice in the call stack panel, you'll notice that yet another function call was pushed onto the end of the stack. The linear function only contains one line of code. It happens to be a return statement. When I step over a return statement, the debugger will pause right before returning so that I can see the value that this function will return. Let's run this line of code and see what it does. I'm going to press step over. 
Notice how the debugger underlines the very bottom of the function. That means it ran all of the code in the function, and it's now allowing me to see the return value. I can see the return value in the stack data panel. Let's have a look at that. So down here in the stack data panel, there's this little thing that doesn't look like an identifier. It actually says return value. So it says, my linear function is going to return 21. Wait, that doesn't seem right. So m in this panel is 2, and b in this panel is 1. Do you see why I'm getting 21 instead of 3? So I just noticed something. It's kind of weird that the values for b and m and the return value are on quotes. The quotes usually mean in Python that what I'm dealing with is a string. So I'm actually going to try this line of code over here in the Python console with the current values of b, m, and x. So if I go into the Python shell, I'm going to run this line m times x plus b. So instead of m, I'm going to use the value I gave it, which is 2. Instead of x, I'm going to give it the value which I gave it, which is 1. And instead of b, I'm going to give it 1 in quotes, as it was in the stack data panel. And I'm going to run that now. OK, so I end up getting 2, 1 in quotes. So let me get the type of what I just wrote. Oh, that is a string. So is 2 times 1 also a string? Well, it appears in quotes. Uh, what is the type of that? So I'm going to go type of 2 times 1. It's also a string. So what happens when you multiply a string by an int is that you get that string repeated n times. So in this case, I got that 2, and I'll repeat that by 1. Therefore, there'll be a single 2 returned. Then the plus with two strings concatenates the strings together, glues them together. And what I end up getting is the string 2, 1. OK, I think I understand what's going on here. Let's go back to debugging. OK, so this function is operating on strings when it really should be operating on ints or floats. But my program still hasn't crashed yet. So where does the crash occur? To investigate, I'm going to click the step out function. This function will finish tracing whatever function I'm currently tracing and return me to the function that called me. Once again, notice the call stack once I press step out. So here we go, step out. So now the last item in the call stack, the call to linear, has been popped. We're on the next line in the parent function. Let's look at our variables now. OK, so the intercept and slope are now strings. And additionally, the variable y is that string 21 that got returned by linear. So let's step over the string formatting print. Step over. OK, that's weird. The debugger seems to be returning at this line. As you can see, there is this underlined line here as if it's returning from this function. So let's press step out to see where it's returning to. OK, so it's back in the main function. It seems to be returning again. Let's do that again. OK, it's returning back to the module level. So I'm going to press step out one more time. Oh, OK. So the reason it was returning was because of the exception thrown at line 9 that's highlighted right now. Let's read that exception. Built-ins, type error, percent %d format, a number is required, not string. I have a type error, and I know that means that Python doesn't like the type of objects I'm giving it. A number is required, so I think that means it wants an int or float and not a string, which is what I provided it. OK, so I gave it a string instead of a number. When Python encounters an uncaught exception like this, it pauses at the point of the crash. What's even better is that I can see the variables at the point of the crash. So I can see what string I gave it when it actually wanted a number. If I look at the line of code that crashed, it's formatting the variables of both x and y as numbers. So let's have a look at those variables in the stack data panel. Down in the stack data panel, I can see that x is the integer 1, so that shouldn't crash this string format. However, the value for y is the string 21. So x is the int 1, 
whereas y has the quotes around it, which means it's a string. So I'm asking Python to format y, which is a string, as a number using the percent %d format. And since this is not possible, Python crashes with a type error. Let's go back to the call stack panel and see the function that called print linear. So I'm just going to click up here. Okay, so now we're in the main function. As we can see, the variables intercept and slope are the strings 1 and 2 because of the quotes. That means that way back up here, my slope and intercepts never end up being converted from strings to an int or a float. Okay, I think I know how to fix this. I'll convert the strings returned by the input function to floats right away so that when those values make it down to the linear function, it will operate on numbers, and therefore, it will return a number that will then be printed by the percent %d format as a decimal number. So let's go ahead and fix that code. I'm going to stop the debugger and write float of input and float of the second input. Okay, I think this is going to fix the problem. I'm going to disable this breakpoint and run my program. I'm going to give it the slope of 2 and the intercept of 1, just as I did before. Excellent! My program works now. In this video, we learned how to use a debugger to fix programs with multiple function calls. We learned how to use the stack data panel in conjunction with the call stack panel to see how variables change across multiple function calls. We learned about the step into and step out buttons and how they can be used to inspect function calls and how to return out of them.